We're going to go to Ise and to Izumo. Um, Ise is the uh, most sacred. Um, <coughs> oops. That's okay. Uh, Ise is the most uh, sacred Shinto shrine in uh, Japan. It is, in fact, the the seat of the imperial uh, regalia, and it is to this shrine that the new emperor uh, is taken uh, when he be um, is uh, bestowed with the imperial um, a jewel, mirror, and a sword. Of course, it remains there. Um, it, we know uh, quite a bit about um, Issei, actually from the tale of Genji, uh, Murasaki Shikabu's um, novel, because it played an important role um, in her writing, because the um, high priestess has to be, or at that time, a virgin princess, and usually from the imperial family. So it was a very important role, and this, there is to this day um, a priestess of um, Issei. Sanctified at um, Issei um, is a sacred hill, a bush, water, and stones, besides the sacred mirror, um, which is hung on a pillar, the heart pillar, uh, at the very center of the um, innermost um, shrine. This um, Issei, this shrine, is dedicated to the imperial ancestor deity, Amaterasu no Omikami. However, it is a very complex um, shrine. It isn't just the sun goddess. In fact, there are two shrines um, at Issei. Uh, the one to Amaterasu is the Naiku, and then the one to um, Toyoko Omikami is known as the Geku. These are two distinct shrines that are actually about four miles apart from each other, but are almost identical. Each of these shrines consists of about 140 sub-shrines sub within their complexes, so each. So we're talking about, uh, about 300 um, buildings, all told. So we are talking about some, a, a very complex um, area. Issei is um, <clears throat> here on the, well, the Nara Peninsula. This is the Issei coast here, and it's, sort of, it's just about here. It's not actually on the map here, but this is Issei. Um, <clears throat> it is um, on the side, is situated on the side of um, mountains. These are cryptomeria um, trees or hinoki trees back here. And uh, flowing along um, the valley um, at Issei is the Isuzu River, um, where we get the name of the car from, the Isuzu. Uh, that's just so you'll remember it. <laughs> um, Anyway, uh, one of the important things then about um, Issei is that it is renewed every 20 years. And there's been a process of rebuilding um, since it first was um, built, which was in uh, the fifth century. It hasn't always been just 20 years. There have been times of civil war when they were unable to, to actually do the rebuilding. But for the most part, um, systematically, um, this is, uh, uh, the buildings have um, taken place every um, 20 years. The last one was completed in 93, and most of my slides were taken in 94, so they were taken right after the building. Hence, the Tory Gate looks very new. I mean, it looks pristine, it looks very clean, and it really was. Now, if one was to see it 20 years hence, if um, just before the next rebuilding, this would look very dark. Uh, because it's, um, uh, it's exposed to so much rain or wet and dampness. So um, <clears throat> we cross over the, um, 
the river um, on this bridge, and there is, uh, of course, the Tory Gate. Um, and I should say something about the Tory Gate. Very simple. Um, everything that is made at Ise is made in the traditional fashion, even to this day. You can see the pegging um, of the horizontal bar here. There are no nails or anything like that used. Um, it's all um, pegged um, and notched. This is the um, shrine of Amaterasu, and um, so here we see the, um, the flag, which is the, uh, the sun, um, the, the symbol of the sun on the white uh, background. And sacred to Ise um, are the roosters that uh, uh, sung out the welcoming of the new day when Amaterasu was encouraged to emerge from the rock. So if you see these uh, when you're at uh, these roosters at Ise, it's a good uh, good luck. Yeah. It's not difficult to see them because there are several of them and they are uh, sort of walking around and they're quite uh, colorful. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Actually, uh, as uh, Gloria Lanham just pointed out to me, um, there are some uh, shrines um, in uh, Japan and uh, in Tokyo where um, there are multiple Tory gates, and they're right on top of each other. So if one Tory gate is good, lots more are even better. And you sort of get that sense because um, here they're not actually standing right on top of each other um, as they are in some places. They are spaced out, but one's constantly passing under them. And as one does, uh, they actually get smaller, and we're being taken into the heart um, of the um, sacred complex. So this is an inner one. And um, there are lights to either side. Um, these would be for um, oil lamps that would be lit um, at night for um, special occasions. And hung on the posts here and here, um, is a sakaki branch, also with uh, the, um, torn, the cut paper. The sakaki tree is the sacred tree of um, Ise. It's also the, the, the tree, the branch of which um, is sacred to the high priestess, and again is mentioned um, in the tale of Genji. So you see branches of it actually cut and hung here. And then uh, we come, we, we walk all the way in. It's about from the, um, w w from the outer si outside, um, it's about a mile in to the um, inner uh, complex. So um, you look at the, um, the map. Well, here's the, the river. This seems to be, oh, because oh, we would have come this way and over. And now this is the ground plan. And this is an aerial view of the um, ground plan. And what you see here um, is the main sanctuary, um, two treasure houses behind it to either side, and um, another small building to the front, and then a vacant lot. And that's exactly what you're seeing here, that the main um, shrine, the treasure houses, um, the gateway and the subsidiary shrine, and over here, the um, vacant lot. It is on this vacant space that the next shrine will be built and completed in 2013. Um, and what you see here is a small hut, and it's here. And in that is the, um, the heart um, log, which is always left in place um, so that that will be the beginning area for the next rebuilding. So there's this wonderful sense of uh, continuity. The shrine itself is surrounded and enclosed by four fences, uh, one inside the other. And I think you can see that quite clearly here. So that protects the, um, the inner sanctum. Um, the one cannot enter into this area. The only uh, people who can is the high um, priestess, the high priest, and of course, um, the emperor. No one else may um, go beyond this outer area. Therefore, even photographing it is difficult. One can, you can see from either side, but not very easily. So mostly one just gets roof 
um, shots of the um, area. Um, the, so what we have then is a site that um, is constantly being, is under change, and it reflects essentially life. Life is changing, life is born, it emerges, and it, it flourishes, and then it decays. It, the building of um, Issei doesn't occur overnight. In fact, it takes about um, eight years. So um, the building for the next, uh, the next rebuilding will probably um, start in, oh, around um, 2009, um, let's say, no, no, 13, 2005, uh, probably. Um, and during that time, um, they have to gather together bundles of miscanthus grass that grows on the hills, and all these, this grass is used for the thatching of the roofs. They have to also cut down um, the uh, cryptomeria trees and dry and season them. Um, apparently, they need um, about 25,000 bundles of thatch that's taken from the, um, the hills. And um, over 1,500, no, what am I, 15, 13,200 trees that are used, with uh, um, the largest having a circumference of uh, four feet, some of which are 600 years old. Now, as these trees are cut, then uh, more trees are planted. So this, this, um, uh, practice has been going on for many hundreds of years, but they're, they're constantly replacing um, the trees. So there are many, many trees there, and although they're taking trees away, they are also um, replacing them. So Issei is the spiritual center of the whole of the Japanese nation. And it has been and is the holy of holies throughout the ages, and it symbolizes eternal renewal. It's a celebration to commemorate, essentially, the rejuvenization of life, a re rejuvenization of also the kami. It's a way of acknowledging um, the kami. Um, so, actually, wait a minute, why don't I go back to here? Uh, what we have here is the, um, the little the heart hut that encloses the um, center um, heart log on which is hung the mirror when it will when it is transferred over. Right now, the mirror in this plan is is hung on the center um, a, a pole in the center of this. Uh, temple over here. But when this is dismantled, then um, the heart um, post will, be, will remain and the mirror will be transferred over to the new heart post that will be erected over here. So this is uh, the heart that will enclose that sort of sacred made, uh, remains of the post, like the sort of the grandmother post, you might say. This is the style of architecture that we see um, at Issei. Um, the uh, roofs are thatched with the miscanthus uh, grass, and there's a slight concave shape to it. It's very carefully shaped. There is a pole, a freestanding pole, on either side um, of the long sides of the buildings. So there's on, on this side and this side. And it's entered also on the long side. The buildings stand on high pillars, and so there's air that's um, allowed underneath. Now, this is important because it's a form of architecture that's associated with storage houses, with, gra with granaries. It allows for air to flow underneath and to keep um, goods and food dry that is kept um, in the chambers above. Um, <clears throat> the extensions um, of the rafters come up in a very logical way. These are known as uh, chiggy boards. They have openings in them. Uh, that uh, 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 There have been many reasons for, for these. They seem to be somewhat um, decorative. We're not quite sure. Um, it's been suggested that wind can pass through them easily, whatever. What we do have, though, is the top of them are cut horizontally. 
you have to remember this for your ID test. Uh, <laughs> cut horizontally. It's subtle, and you'll find out why later on. Um, now, when we look from above, this is um, before the old building has been dismantled. This is the new rebuilding, and this is the old one. So um, after the new one has been completed and dedicated, then the old one will be uh, dismantled, and it will lay fallow um, uh, until the next rebuilding. On the ground here, um, these, uh, the ground is actually covered with pebbles that are taken from the Isuzu River. And at the celebrations of the, um, the new um, building, uh, um, which was in 1993 in October, people for a month um, actually collected um, pebbles from the river and actually brought them to the temple, presented them to the priests, and then they were laid on the ground. So all of these pebbles actually come from the uh, river. Okay, uh, this is the um, back of the... Um, main shrine. It's a very simple building. Um, timbered building, thatched roof, and this is the, um, the length. This is actually the back. The entrance is actually on the um, other side. Uh, it has a veranda running um, around it. And the roof itself has balanced cylinders. These are like log cylinders that are known as katswogi. Now, these might originally have been weights that would have been placed on roofs to hold them down, particularly during storms. So it would have just been a sort of a weight to um, secure the roof, pretty much as stones are placed on roofs, for instance, in um, uh, Switzerland. Same type of idea. The katswogi are like cylinder shapes and then tapered slightly at either end. And then they have um, bronzed and gilded caps uh, placed on them. Today, there's quite a bit of bronze um, on the um, ends of the caps here and here. And I'll show you some colored slides in a bit up here as well. Those seem to have been additions that probably occurred um, later in rebuildings, um, possibly as late as the um, Edo period. But for the most part, the uh, design um, is said to be authentic um, to the um, original plans. Here is um, a shot of the um, four fences. And here you can see the four fences again. And um, now you can see this is um, taken of an older um, building before it was uh, replaced. And the smaller buildings reflect this exactly the same type of style. There's a simplicity and directness. There's a purity to the design um, of the um, uh, Naiku. Uh, it, it reflects a straightforwardness. There, there is nothing um, elaborate. It also is a reflection of a purely indigenous form of architecture. Uh, this is something that seems to, well, everything seems to have originally come from the mainland, but it developed in this way in a very distinctive um, sort of Japanese uh, way. These now, um, oh, let's see. Maybe. This uh, is taken like a three-quarter. You can see the entrance way here. These are uh, steps leading up. And um, the steps very carefully carved uh, and steep steps uh, leading to the um, entrance area. This um, uh, slide allows us to see the freestanding uh, post that stands, uh, well, they, there's two of them that stand to either side. And in both of these, uh, slides, you can get a sense of the Katswogi boards, which are capped um, by the um, br gilded bronze uh, uh, caps. This is actually one of the treasure houses, and um, I know that because there are fewer boards um, along the top here. Um, let's see, Naiku has uh, 10 of these along here, 10 and the horizontal cut top. 
another um, view of the, the top and the actual uh, thatching. And you can see how the thatching has worn. So all of these uh, shots, for the most part, taken at uh, different uh, times. Now, why was it rebuilt? What was the reason? What was the original reason? Well, th there's many myths about it, and one of them is that um, after the initial uh, building, that a, a fox ran across the, um, the grounds and desecrated um, the grounds and polluted it, and therefore um, it had to be rebuilt. But um, that may only be part of it. I, I'm a strong believer in more practical, functional um, explanations. These posts are placed directly into the ground. So it is built in the ground. This area is very wet. It's actually built on the side of the hill, so there's pretty good drainage, but it's still wet. In most areas where wooden posts are used, they have, well, today, concrete um, platforms or surrounds. And even um, in India, uh, posts would be placed in ceramic jars or bowls to protect them. These are not. These are placed directly in the ground, rather like the um, haniwa that were also the cylinders placed directly in the ground. The, the, that touch of the ground is important, but it also destroys and decays. So um, I think practically, after a period, what happens is that the structure begins to collapse. It begins to decay. And therefore, it has to be uh, repaired and removed. And that um, is what is happening. And you can see the sort of the natural decaying taking place, even um, at the rooftop. That um, thatch is constantly um, pulling apart, decaying, animals sort of nesting in it. And so it, it always needs a lot of care. After 20 years, these buildings are in pretty poor shape. Therefore, um, they need to be replaced, particularly when one um, recognizes the importance on purity that is placed um, uh, on things in um, the Shinto belief system. Um, these are just uh, just some more um, uh, views of uh, some of these are actually let's see one two oh the, yeah this is the back of the um, the shrine with one of the um, uh, treasury houses and surrounding um, the outer areas are um, other um, uh, rocks and trees, and um, you see these trees have bamboo tied around it. These are like skirts um, around the base of the trees. And so I thought that this was uh, quite beautiful and uh, was another sort of sacred um, uh, reference like the Shimanawa. However, apparently not. That This was to protect them from insects. There was some sort of insect infestation. <laughs> so I, I was trying to, to give it some sort of meaning, uh, but um, this was just actually to protect them at this time. Uh, here is uh, one of the small um, outer shrines, as you uh, can see here. Um, and uh, this is uh, a stone, just of a, a kami stone, that uh, is deemed um, sacred. So it's being uh, marked off by the um, this sort of sacred fence. Um, so, and we see a lot of this um, all around uh, um, the complex. Um, <clears throat> And this is leading up to some of the subsidiary shrines. As I said, there are, are about there are 140 um, subsidiary um, shrines, many of them dedicated um, to uh, agricultural um, kami, to food um, uh, goddesses. Um, each of them has a, a special um, dedication. And. Let's see, here um, are some black and white uh, shots to show you some of the details. Um, I, I think this is quite beautiful here, where you can see how the um, thatching is uh, cut and trimmed to give it this very sharp edge. And then underlying it, supporting it, um, is a stronger layer um, of thatching.
to, uh, under here. Then um, here, what we can see is the, the wood, um, all joined wood. And then the ends here have these um, relief worked bronzed and gilded caps. And the same you can see over here as well. So attention to detail is very important. This? There? Oh, here. They, these probably, they, well, those are holes. These probably are to hold the, 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 the cap in. In fact, there's a wonderful um, film. I have a video. Um, actually, Brian, I'm, I might, um, I might talk about sort of showing it at some time on um, uh, Issei. And what is interesting is everything is done using the time-honored um, traditional ways th with um, the uh, traditional hand um, tools. However, they're not above now using um, electric uh, saws and drills and things, uh, and the, uh, they're, they're keeping up with the times. But the actual um, joinery is still done without the use of nails. But I think these are, in fact, probably, um, uh, they should be cinched on, but those definitely look like some nails. So um, there is a certain leeway uh, that's experienced. Now, um, the reference uh, is, goes back um, to the uh, Kofun and um, actually Jomon period. If you remember the, that, um, the pit dwellings that I showed you last time, uh, they were covered by um, thatch uh, roofed areas. We also see similar types of buildings occurring in mirrors. Now this is a, a mirror from the um, Kofun period. In, and this would be uh, very much um, in the Japanese style. So this is m made in Japan, and on the back are four buildings, each of which has a form of thatched roof. This is an, you're looking at this one upside down, but it's, um, this is the top of the thatch, and then this is on its side, this is on its side, and this is um, on the top. So the thatched um, roof is um, something that has gone back many years and now okay this is a um, detail from the mirror and you can see the thatching of the roof here uh, the building actually does have posts they seem to be filled in and then this very steep um, stairway is very similar to what we see at Issei and um, this is again a storage um, a house at least I, uh, or a granary I'm assuming it is and this is a relief um, depiction on the outside of um, a dotaku. This is one of the bells that I showed you, standing on high posts, thatched roof, and approached by, uh, this time, a, a steep ladder. And then we have many haniwa, um, in which you see here are double thatched roofs, um, and they extend out and um, uh, I, these are the type of roofs that are still found in various areas of um, the uh, Japanese mountains, the Alps, um, in some Surakawagao in that area. This is a reconstruction of a yayoi a building in which, again, you have the, uh, the poles. It's, it's a very rustic looking work. It doesn't have the finesse, the elegance um, of Issei. And we must remember, of course, that Issei is an imperial um, construction. And even the thatching um, is a sort of very rustic. Um, it was quite different from the very beautiful polished roof that we see. Um, and now this uh, takes us t to the next shrine at um, Issei, and this is the um, Geku. Uh, the uh, Geku Shrine is uh, dedicated to Toyoke um, Omikami, who is the serial goddess. Um, now, this is interesting because this, this 
seems to indicate that residing in this area were, was the Issei clan, and that the clan had their own kami, who was the cereal goddess or the grain goddess, um, who is personified as Toyoyuki. Um, they may be in, have been invaded uh, by the imperial clan that moved in, or the Yamato clan, I should call them. And so you have the Yamato clan with their sun goddess, and you have the um, pre-existing people living in the area with their own goddess, who must also be appeased. She can't be just removed uh, because uh, that uh, would spell tragedy, violence, destruction. So about uh, just four miles away, it's, it, you actually have to take a bus, or you can, one can hike it, you can walk it, um, uh, to the other site, and it's virtually a replica of what we have just been seeing. It also goes through the same um, exercise of renewal. Here we see the main shrine, um, in the existing site, and the plot of land to the site is um, a, a bear. It, it has, it's the um, <clears throat> site that has um, had the original buildings removed. It, it will be where the next rebuilding will take place. We also have the heart pillar in uh, the little hut over here, uh, which um, is essentially the heart post uh, left over from the original um, uh, building. And so they will alternate backwards and uh, forwards. Um, here we have the uh, main shrine. There is um, a little difference. Uh, you have the two um, treasuries, and there's actually, uh, well, this is the uh, another treasure hall, but there's an additional building in the uh, Naiku. And these are all fiddly um, things. I mean, you don't have to worry about things like this. But people who are um, interested in the architecture um, and the history of the site um, usually like to know quite a bit more about the uh, buildings. One enters through a succession of uh, Tory gates, uh, very similar to uh, um, those for uh, Naiku. And then one comes up to the actual inner shrine, and these are leading to that. And actually, you can get quite a bit closer to this one. You still can't go right inside, but uh, one can go into this this far. This one on the uh, right is a little out of focus, and um, this and here you can see uh, the rooftop. Okay, that. Mm. Oops, okay, that's okay. Um, and as you can see, it's a thatched roof, katsuogi boards, and then the chigi boards as before. Uh, here are two uh, views of the um, heart stone um, or the heart pillar in a little um, hut here and here. Now, these are actually from, um, uh, uh, from outs outside um, in the um, Geku area. The these are not the actual Geku itself, that because each of the subsidiary shrines also were rebuilt onto alternate sites. So it's an amazing um, undertaking. And here, I, I think this is very interesting, too, is seeing the different colors of the uh, stones that have been that um, are marking out actually the fenced areas. Um, details of the uh, Geku um, and the, the elements are essentially uh, the same. Um, the, the design is the same. Look at the same tapering of the thatch, the convex, I'm um, sorry, the concave um, a shape of it. The very subtly done, very carefully cut. Um, nothing rough about this at all. Now, here what I'm doing is comparing the um, Naiku uh, with the Geku. Uh, the Naiku has, um, as I said, 10 Katsuogi. The um, Geku has um, 9. So it's sort of a subtle difference. Uh, the Naiku's uh, chigi boards are cut horizontally, and the Geku's are cut vertically. Now, 
it doesn't matter where you are, everything always resembles the, t the home. So here we would n always know that we were in the um, Geku uh, um, complex because of how the chiggy boards are cut. With the subsidiary shrines, there are, uh, there are multiple different numbers. They're always less than nine, but that's not a way to tell. But you can always tell by the, uh, these uh, sort of scissor-shaped chiggy boards. Now, also, this is, these chiggy boards come to resemble scissors that sometimes are just placed on the top of a roof, but they also become the way in which we um, can identify a Shinto shrine. Even here in um, Japantown, there's the Shinto shrine has these um, chiggy boards. Uh, I shouldn't say absolutely always, but it is a very distinctive mark, and uh, this is, we would never find these on top of a Buddhist um, temple, uh, for instance. Um, what is interesting, too, is that they are extensions of these rafters. As you see them coming up, they are logical. Everything at Ise is logical and meaningful. Uh, there is a, they have a function. And later on, they'll just be sat on as appendages, and they just sort of become almost decorative. But at this point, um, they, they definitely um, have grown out of a functional use. Um, the thatched huts that you showed us reconstructions of also had the chicken Yes. Yeah, they all have chicken boards, and you can tell where they come from as to whether it's vertical or horizontally cut. Um, okay, what I thought I'd do is just show you some plans. Um, here you can see this is the um, side view of um, the Naiku, or to the sun goddess, to the earth goddess, the Geku below. Um, <clears throat> uh, main difference um, being uh, by the shape of these extended uh, chigi boards here. Um, in the uh, um, diagram you can also see very distinct uh, sort of tapering of the roof at the top, widening down um, below. And then it's not cut off horizontally, but is cut off at an angle. And you know that is important because that will allow the water to flow down, the rain flows down, and then it will fall down beyond the um, veranda. So it's to sort of like protect it, very carefully uh, thought out. Again, now these um, uh, is the, the frontal views, um, the entrance of both, are one uh, just having one more board, Katsuogi board at the top than uh, the other. Um, now, We've been uh, focusing on um, Ise. However, uh, we need to also now move to Izumo, uh, which is um, on uh, the sort of northern coast, um, let's see, of Honshu here. Ise is over here in the um, Nara or Yamato Peninsula. So this is Ise. And Iz um, Izumo is over here, closer, of course, uh, to Korea. And uh, this makes sense because ok uh, Okunonushi um, w uh, left um, Izumo to um, pay his respects to Korea before going up to heaven. Anyway, um, Izumo is the other great um, shrine in Japan. There are many of them, but the two principal are the Ise and Izumo, dedicated to the sun goddess. And then Izumo is uh, dedicated um, to Okuni Noshi, who has also has got many, many other names, um, Okuni, e Okuni Muchi, Omo no Nushi no Kami, Otakuni Nushi no Kami. It goes on and on. But one of the most important is um, Daikoku. You may um, be more familiar with the, the, um, the name uh, Daikoku-sama. Um, Daikoku-sama is the maker of the land. He shared the pain and the pleasure of the, the construction of the land. He is very much a land agricultural 
based deity. Um, he is, um, well, I say he, but um, Daikoku or Okunanushi has, there are celebrations actually throughout the year, but the big celebrations um, are in the fall. And he's also associated with sericulture and fishing. So not only just agriculture, but with sort of uh, material things, with the silk culture, and also with fishing, which makes sense. Um, Daikoku is a guardian um, kami who keeps everything um, as it should be. Um, he's the one who maintains peace. He keeps harmony in the land. He's also um, famous for uh, keeping happy relationships and, and sort of keeping um, sort of uh, uh, an even keel within um, domestic relationships. This includes marriages and all relationships between people, um, uh, which can extend out to professional um, uh, interrelationships. Um, Daikoku, uh, therefore, um, was actually um, the descendant um, of, soon, um, uh, uh, of the um, sun goddess's um, younger brother. And um, she then, of course, entered into this agreement that Ninaji, her um, offspring, in fact, would be the ruler of Japan. And then Susanoo sort of took off and, and then went back to the heavens. But when um, Ninaji uh, descended and she gave him all of the um, regalia, she also said, um, now that you have finished your enterprise of uh, taking this land, my descendants shall administer the affairs of state and you shall deliver the virtues of relations so that people can lead a happy life. I will build your house in the same architectural style as mine called Ameno Hisu Mino Mia, with long and big pillars and thick and broad planks. My second son, Ameno Hiso no Mikoto, shall render services to you and guard, o guard over your house forever. So by order of Matarasu no Omikami, the gods came together to construct a grand shrine um, to her son. And Okuninushi was then um, moved out and he went to the heavens. Now this is all according to the um, Nihon Shoki, which is the earliest chronicles of Japan. They date to about the um, eighth century. So uh, again, there seems to be a, sort of a political situation that is occurring. The establishment of um, the uh, peoples in this area um, and the need to have a Yamato um, base and also a need to accommodate um, this somewhat edgy god who uh, may come back. And uh, what better way than to build a grand shrine? Izumo, um, its history goes back um, to at least the uh, fifth century and uh, possibly earlier. It is not though rebuilt in the same way. According to the Nihon Shoki, um, uh, and uh, that it, it goes back, say, to at least the fifth century. Then uh, we have another reference to it in the 950s, which is the Hain Heian period, where it uh, was described as being the main shrine of this area. And uh, it was rebuilt at this time. It also gives us uh, dimensions. Around 1200, in the Kamakura period, it was again rebuilt. Uh, at which time the main shrine seems to have re re been reduced somewhat. And then in 1744, again, it was reconstructed. That's in the Edo period. So what we see today is the Edo rebuilding of it. And uh, this is a ground plan. And uh, here is, um, can it be focused a bit on the right, please? This is the entrance This with um, a, the uh, Tory gate, and to the side is a tree with one of these aprons with it tied uh, with the uh, sort of wish-granting papers um, on it. 
as we enter in, um, oops, let's see. Okay, um, this uh, actually is uh, what it took. Um, this uh, is what it looks like. That um, this is not my photograph. It actually comes from a book, but you can see multiple roofs, and um, the roofs um, are different. It's no longer um, a thatched roof, but they're very fine um, cedar. Uh, shingle, so it's a, like a shingle roof, and on the top of the roof, you see the chiggy boards are just sitting there like crossed scissors. They, there are just uh, three katsuogi boards. So these are just sort of um, almost like decorative references. Um, there's a, a very fancy acroteria here. Also, the shape of the roof is distinctively different. It's concave instead of convex. You see, it flares out instead of sort of curving over. You know, there's the encompassing feeling of Ise. This one is more sort of taking off. Unfortunately, slides don't give a sense of size, but um, Ise is very small. It's human size. Um, Izumo is enormous. It's very, very large. Standing high on very high pillars, um, in a similar um, way to Issei, but it is actually enclosed um, underneath. Um, let's have a look. Okay. Uh, it is um, entered from the short side, Issei from the long side. Um, it's entered from the south. The south is the auspicious area, the area of the sun, the warming area. The east and the south are the auspicious um, sides. And then when one, when one enters in, there's actually a passageway that you go around. So you actually walk around, or one doesn't, uh, one, there isn't access to it except for the priest, but this is what happens around, and you walk around. And then painted on the ceiling of this area um, are nine clouds. Um, Izumo uh, means clouds, and so this is the um, th the shrine of the clouds, and actually so painted in there is the reference to the uh, clouds. And then uh, there's this altar here, uh, which is the altar to receive the kami, to receive the, the kami that are sacred um, to this area. I hesitate to use the term gods as it's written here. I, it, it, we really are not talking about sort of a god in, in the way, uh, sort of an anthropomorphic way that we consider a god. This is the um, entrance up the very steep um, stairway, and across the entrance is this beautiful shimanawa uh, out of, made out of rice straw with the uh, cut paper hanging from it. It's very sort of distinctive, indicating, of course, that we're entering into this uh, sacred area. Now, it may not have been rebuilt, but um, it actually has been constantly restored. The repairs are being made to it. Um, if, if you go there, if you visit, um, there's invariably one part or the other is um, under restoration. Uh, this is the uh, back view. So um, this is the entrance, and then um, this is the back view, which in silhouette is, is quite beautiful. It's a very elegant um, shape uh, that we see there. And um, this then is the aerial view um, in which we can see the top of the um, shrine here uh, the, with the cedar roofs. Uh, distinctly different again from the, the thatched roofs of Issei. And this is another view of it. And I'm comparing it now to um, Issei. So <clears throat> immediately you can see how the roof has been uh, treated, the thatched here um, in that, that sort of concave way. Here um, it is, uh, oh, say convex, this is concave. Um, see how the chiggy boards just sit on there, just, just perched on there, like little birds, actually. But this way, um, it's much more functional, it makes much more sense. 
Um, it's logical, the building here. And um, in at, uh, Izumo, then uh, you get sort of a stepped arrangement of the interlocking roofs. There's a fussier treatment to it. The roof is very large and heavy in relationship to the building underneath it. Um, it isn't quite as well sort of coordinated, I don't think, um, as Issei. Issei uh, has a purity to it, which um, it sort of personifies what it is, um, or sort of, it's really what is essentially um, Japanese. I mean, it's that sense of restraint, whereas Izumo is um, the, the sort of the decorative, the, the Momiyama style, if you will. <laughs> you'll, you'll find out what that means uh, sort of eventually. Um, Let's see, I don't know why I had that on there. No, I think, okay. okay. And just another um, comparison between uh, the two roof styles. So this is the earliest uh, form of architecture, um, what we can talk of as true architecture. It's a Japanese form of architecture, and it situates us um, very strongly um, to begin um, the next stage. Thank you. <laughs>